In the late 1970s, Harvey Firestein wrote and starred in the play Torch Song Trilogy, a work which went on to win Tonys for Best Play and Best Leading Actor in a play. The critically acclaimed drama told the story of Arnold Beckhoff, a young gay man struggling to find love and happiness in 1970s New York City. Now, 36 years later, this landmark play has returned to the Helen Hayes Theater, its original Broadway theater, with a new title, Harvey Firestein's Torch Song. The revival, starring Michael Urie as Arnold Beckoff and Tony and Academy Award-winning Mercedes Rule as his mom, Mrs. Beckoff, is winning rave reviews. Here's a look. You don't get much light here. We get what they call indirect semi-shade. <laughs> it's good for the plants. Mm -hmm. So is manure. <laughs> how do you how do you find the how do you find the roaches? I turn on the lights. <laughs> Arnold, when a man is with his friends, he makes wife jokes. When he's with his wife, he makes mother jokes. When he's with his mother, he lets her make the jokes. <laughs> and joining us now is Mercedes Rule. Mercedes, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure. So, Mercedes, Ben Brantley of the New York Times wrote that in this play, you, quote, nearly steal the show in an expertly coiled performance. Not too shabby. Yeah. Um, how did you come? to be part of this revival. Why did you decide to take on this role? Well, you know, as most things in, in an actor's career uh, happen, quite by accident, it, it just fell out of heaven into my lap. <laughs> um, my, my manager called me and said, there's some real interest. To, will you meet with Moises and, and Harvey, Moises Kaufman, Kaufman the director? The director yeah. I thought this was a, a, an amusing and a good role for sure. I, I liked it, and I thought I know I know I, I know how to uh, how to approach this role. But what I didn't realize um, the first time around that we did it in uh, at, at the second stage is that there's a really there's a deeper dimension to this woman, which is fiercely loving and and fiercely judgmental. Um, She's very funny, very amusing, you know, a little bit on the loving, tough love side when yeah. she first comes in, but it's very clear she adores her favorite son. She does. Um, but uh, as, the, as the act progresses, we come to understand that she's deeply conflicted about his homosexuality, yeah. remembering that this was written in 1979, and then right. this was even before the AIDS crisis. Right. Um, and he was a man writing about gay love, gay marriage, gay commitment, gay parenting. Before right. this was in any way a part of the, of the public conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think this delightful, beautiful, loving son of hers, to have this element, this, this dimension of his life, was just so something that she couldn't understand or accept. Mm -hmm. And uh, she had been trying to talk him out of it, move him away. Right. Even in the first scene, she says, you know, one day you might meet a nice girl. And it's like, no, <laughs> I don't think so. Um, but as we get into it, we realize how deeply conflicted she is over it. The one sense that I got, you know, once you got on the stage of the second act, uh, was that, that the character was changing. You know, that, that there was a character that walked in and a different character at the end of the play. But from what you're saying is, it's not the character that changes, it's our perception of the character that changes because more of her comes out, right? Yeah, well at first- How do you do that? Because at, at, at first she's kind of like just a funny character and then boom, becomes very moving. Well, she comes out, she's very funny. Yeah. She's had a long trip. She's a little grumbly, but in a very funny and amusing way, which is obviously her style. Um, and she stay, stays that way until the subject of homosexu homosexuality comes up in such a way that it confronts her and she has to have a reaction. Mm -hmm. And then, as with a lot of people, the humor fades out because something else, the, the gorge has risen and, and the, the, you know, the, there's a conflict afoot now that in this particular one goes very, very deep and it becomes extremely fierce. And I remember in the previews, um, our producer, um, Richie Jackson, came back one night and I had used a kind of an adjustment, what actors call an adjustment, mm -hmm. um, in, in, in the major conflictual scene with uh, Michael Yuri, who is so brilliant yeah, and dancing with second, you yeah. close every minute, every <laughs> yeah. nuance, yeah, he's yeah. on top of it with you, he's alive, yeah. you know? Um, and somehow this, this adjustment brought out a kind of an anger, a kind of frustrated rage that had not come up and out of me 
any time before. Mm -hmm. And when I got off stage, I thought, I wonder if that was right or if it went too far. And Richie came back and he said, that was it. That was fierce. And I thought, oh, that's where I've been going, to that place. <laughs> and he said, I stood in the back and there was a sea, obviously, of a lot of men, mainly men. And he said, of a certain age. And many of them were weeping because they went hmm. through something that uh, fierce mm -hmm. with their parents. The audience is audibly upset at some of the things she says in the moment where she loses mm -hmm. all self-control and says, mm -hmm. and, and, and her frustration with this comes out and says, she says, in effect, if, if, if I'd known you were going to be gay, mm -hmm. I, 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 I would not have had you as yeah. a son. Mm -hmm. And that's when the whole audience just takes an audible And you sense gasp. it up there, right? You sense oh, when things are happening. I think, yeah. oh, I hope there's nobody with a gun out there. <laughs> because at that point, they hate her, yeah. you know? At that point, she is that parent mm -hmm. who said the unacceptable thing to you at one point mm -hmm. in your life. And immediately she regrets it. And immediately you see how heart sick she is that this came up and out of her. You do. Mm -hmm. But... So it's very real, and, and now the audience has a problem. Do we like her, do we not like her? How do we forgive her for this? Yeah. And so the rest of the play is... is, is the well, job you know, of, as you say, when the first uh, was presented on Broadway in 1982, it was a different world. It was a yeah. different world in the audience. Um, and I guess what the play was saying to that audience was one thing. What is the play saying to audiences today, to contemporary audiences, do you think? That may be different from that. I think it's more or less the same thing. Because we think, and especially living in um, urban and urbane parts mm -hmm. of the country, we think we've, we've, and we have in fact, made great strides in terms of um, acceptance of LGBT, acceptance of women uh, in the workplace. In the, uh, uh, but in fact, there is so much to be done. Mm -hmm. in terms of human beings accepting the differences in each mm -hmm. other. That uh, uh, when, when we play in front of these audiences, we realize this issue is still deeply felt and still very much on the table uh, between parents and, and their gay children. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because it is not, it has not been socially acceptable for hundreds of years, yeah. you know? Yeah. Um, and, and old habits die yeah, hard. Yeah. Take more than 30 years. You betcha. Well, Mercedes, it's a wonderful play, and you are wonderful in it. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, to my talk pleasure. About.